Tim Burton and Wednesday Adams are like a marriage made in heaven. The only person who gets to torture my brother is me. When you have an iconic filmmaker like Tim Burton, you conjure up a visual of what his aesthetic is. Tim is such an iconic director. I used to have consistent dreams about Beetlejuice when I was younger. Tim Burton, such an incredible filmmaker, and Tim was always our first choice for the series Wednesday. The thing that makes Tim a great visual director is that he has an amazing sense of color and style. After 37 years, I always have fun with Tim Burton. He likes to keep things visceral. Action. Hello, my little black cloud. How was your first week? What I love about Tim's vision is uh, as quirky and as creative as it can be, there is a truth about the characters. That's what makes them believable in worlds that are sometimes not so believable. Tim sees himself as an outsider. I think there's an affinity to the character of Wednesday that he's always loved. If you look back at his movies, there are characters like Wednesday. I think this is kind of a dream come true for him to really explore that character. Holy crap, do you make a habit scaring the hell out of people? It's more of a hobby. The Adams family is very symbolic of how I feel about families. I mean, I think all families are strange. Lurch, please remind my parents that I'm no longer speaking to them. And I particularly love Wednesday because she shares my worldview on things. And that was fun to explore. Nevermore is an enigma, a place where the questions far outweigh the answers. I wanted to create a world where these characters are in a heightened reality with school, therapy, your parents. It just spoke to me on all those levels. Tim is one of the most detail-oriented directors I've ever worked with. About framing and what lenses we would use because he kind of liked when they were wide and a bit disoriented. He also drew a lot. Goth comes to him very naturally. And Tim designed what the monster looks like in the show. He had a couple sketches on his table and the writers saw it and they said, that one. We love working on the world building with Tim. Behold. The sets, the colors, the palette. Tim really elevated things with the cast of actors that he was able to assemble in every role. This show is not a TV series, it is an extended Tim Button movie. In this more longer form, to see it come to life, that's the fun of it. I've never done something quite like this. It was very exciting to be able to be a part of the Adams Family world. Did you hear that, my little storm cloud? You're an excellent hand. Hello, thing. We had the actual actor, Victor, on set at all times. Actual filming process was um, it's just like working with another actor. You're um, reacting and he's speaking, he's signing. Thing is a classic character in the Adams Family canon. The first phone call I had with, with Tim, uh, he wanted Thing to be derived from an actor, a performer. So we set out to find us an actor who could do the part. Somebody who had the right look to the hands, who had nimble fingers, was able to do all of these moves. Also, they had to be, you know, young enough and supple enough to fit in very awkward situations. Victor is a magician by trade. That's what he does. That's how he makes his living. He's never been an actor. So we brought him in and we started doing rehearsals with him to see what he could do and to show him what worked with a walk and what didn't work with a walk. And that first scene he kind of really nailed. It's pretty hard to create from start to end. Even the way he talks, it's pretty hard to find movements that can express feelings. Not above breaking a few fingers. For example, in love or angry. Everything is pretty hard when you do it with a real actor. Yes, and serial killers. With Jenna, she accepted it really quickly that she's talking to a hand. I know I'm stubborn, single-minded, and obsessive. It honestly wasn't difficult at all. It was more so difficult where if, if I had to interact with him and I had to pretend he was there and hold nothing. Did you really think my highly trained olfactory sense wouldn't pick up on the faint whiff of neroli and bergamot in your favorite hand lotion? I could do this all day. On set, you have to prepare with the VFX guys. They have to see what angle do they use. How is thing uh, positioning? Find ways to hide the thing. For example, under a bed. Hey, I can't fit under a bed. Let's make a hole in the floor. Hey, I can't fit under the floor. Let's raise the whole building in the air, so put him under the floor. We would need to do CG thing as well, but only when pretty much everything else failed. 
I think the tedious part about it was they had to use a ball and chart for special effects, so every single setup we did, someone would have to come in with a gray ball, silver ball, chip chart with all these colors, and that is when we would kind of slow down in our days a bit. I'm going to seek help him. I'm not stopping. Well, you've got a, a hand on set, and he's he's acting. And normally, you, when you talk about a paint out and visual effects, oh yeah, paint out, it's easy. But we're, we're like painting out 90% of the human being that's dominating the shot, and keeping the 10% that's the hand. It's actually very hard to do. It's slow for the crew, because they have to light it in such a way that Victor's not casting shadows, and, you know, so there's, there's a lot that goes into doing it. This isn't weird at all. The VFX guys, me, we all tried to to make a teamwork for a thing, and what ended up looking like, it's, it's awesome. I, I honestly was so nervous to do this part because I just wanted to do her justice, because I care about her and respect her so much. Wednesday is such an iconic character, somebody that I always, one, was compared to my entire life. People always told me that I remi reminded them of Wednesday, I think, because I tend to be very dry and monotone. It was really important to me that I did something different because I didn't want to be ripping anybody off, even though she's been done so flawlessly in the past. My interpretation of Wednesday, or, or what we went with on set, because we did try a couple different versions, she's a bit more socially awkward. There's a confidence there, but it, it's more concealed. Wow. You look... Unrecognizable. Ridiculous. A classic example of female objectification for the male gaze. She's more to the point, she's on a mission, and no one else really gets in the way. Hey, freak! This is a close practice. <laughs> the only person who gets to torture my brother is me. Well, Wednesday's currently a teenager. I've never seen her as a teenager before. She's kind of in the rebelling stage, does not want to be compared to her mom. Typically, she's always the smartest in the room. Do you read Italian? Of course. It's a native tongue of Machiavelli. She's always a few steps ahead of anyone. She, she's never really worried about it because she's dealing with this serious investigation involving serial killers and murders and monsters. She doesn't like to be proved wrong. How are you failing to see that someone is desperately trying to derail my investigation? I think everybody wishes that they were as bold as Wednesday. She says exactly what she's thinking, she doesn't hold back, but she's also not a brat about it. She's confident. She doesn't second guess herself, and she's somebody who's very, very sure of who she is. Did you think I was going to judge you over some lousy prank? I would have taken it further. You mean like putting piranhas in a swimming pool? I may have done a little digging on you after we met. I'd do it again. She may not show it in her face, but she expresses real emotion. Any frustration, any annoyance, any whatever, she makes it known. And I think that that's really powerful. 